This is Mark, the other Chopstick guy. And today I wanna to show you one of my favorite editing tools. Now, this product, Luminar Neo, can be used as a standalone editing software, but I use it as a filter inside of Adobe Photoshop. So I wanna show you a couple reasons why you might wanna take a look at Luminar Neo if you're not using it already. So right now they're having a special sale for uh, Black Friday. And now is the time to move into Luminar. It is a, a very budget-friendly product. But I want to show you just a couple things that I like to do inside of Luminar Neo. So I'm going to grab right here out of my filter menu, down here, Skyloom Software, Luminar Neo. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to load this up into Luminar Neo. It's going to open that product as a filter and I'm going to have access to all of the features of the standalone program. So when it pops up, it comes up to this presets. These are all presets, uh, you know, recipes that have already been built into the product. So if you're somebody that doesn't want to spend a lot of time editing, you can use their suggestions. Like for this photo, it says, try these blockbuster collection of images. They say it might work well with this image. So it's loading them all up and it's giving you a preview of what it would look like applying those presets. So we can just hover our mouse over and go, here's the film noir, here's beyond the wall. I kind of like the look of that. Maybe uh, teal and orange, uh, Shanghai, Cyberpunk, Speedway. There's just different ones. I can go back. I can look at some of their other ones like this Filmatic, and uh, maybe something in there will work. Letting them load up here a second. The matte noir, quirky mo, nostalgic haze, cold fire comfort. So you can see that these are all just baked in presets. I don't want to use any of those. I just want to go up to the top middle here and say edit, which is going to bring up all of my editing tools. And again, this is not a, a tutorial on how to use this program. I just want to show you some of the things that I use that I think are kind of like the secret sauce to finishing off an image. So when I've been, been working on an image and I feel like it's ready to have the uh, seasoning put on it, I'll come in to... Um, Luminar here, Neo, and I'll use something like the face uh, tool here. And what that's going to do is it's going to select the face, and then I can brighten that face up. I'll go to 100%. You'll notice it looks a little pixelated until I let it go. That's one of the things I wished would change in Luminar, and maybe at some point it will, but I can still slide it back and forth and see what it's doing. And, you know, I want to lighten the face a little bit up there. But you can see now I've brightened up the face. I'm going to go underneath eyes here. And a couple of things I do all the time is this iris flare. Again, I'm going to go to 100%. I would normally never do this, but uh, our model Naomi here has very dark eyes. And so you can see on the bottom, it's creating that little bit of flare in her iris and bringing out some of that copper color. And the next thing is the eye enhancer. And I can kind of... Uh, do the uh, the whole eye globally. Again, you would never slide it this much unless you're working with really dark eyes like I am on this one. And the other one I like is I like this dark circle tool. It doesn't really, you know, have to have like super dark circles under the eyes. I just like it kind of brightens that whole eye area up. And then the one I always use is improve eyebrows. You can see it darkens up the eyebrows. The next thing is I drop down to the mouth and I'm going to add a little redness to the lips, maybe darken them up a tiny bit since I'm making them red. I usually don't add too much saturation because I think it, it doesn't look very natural when I do that. So we'll back out and I can turn off with a little eyeball here what we've done. See so yeah, how we've just like drawn attention to the face. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this happening. I really like also their skin tool. I'll use this quite a bit. Usually I start about 20 and I let the AI kind of kick in and do its thing. And I can show you kind of the before and after. It is very subtle. You might not even be able to see it on the video. Let's see if I go to 100%. Now you can really see how it is if I zoom in, what it's doing to the skin there. You know, obviously a little way too much. So I'll back that way down to where I can kind of see it's just starting to apply it. And I think it helps it out. The shine removal just kind of gets your highlights and your midtones to blend together better so you don't have these very specular highlights. So I, I'm not going to need to use it on this one, but I just wanted to show you that it is available there. The other tool that I use all the time is this Super Contrast. 
I use this as almost like my uh, highlight recovery and my shadow recovery tool. So when I select those, see if I slide this over, you'll start seeing my highlights really start getting some more detail into them. But on this image, you know, I might just balance out a tiny bit. I don't even know that it needs it, but mid-tone I rarely use because it seems to make my colors go very wonky. Uh, but the shadow contrast, this is where I can really lift those shadows. I really like how it just can bring them up a tiny bit if they're a little too dark. So that, that's kind of what I do on all of my images. And then I have one last thing that I do, and that's this mystical. I know a lot of people don't like kind of this glowy look to their images. And here, if I push it really far, it's going to look like a 1970s glamour image. But I like to just add just the slightest amount of glow. I feel like it just kind of blends everything together. I usually don't do it over uh, 15, somewhere around 10 or 15. And I feel like it gets the look that I like. Um, one quick product, uh, other thing that I'm going to show you really quickly is um, this relight feature. I just discovered this about a month ago in this product. It's a pretty new feature. But watch this. If I darken down, it says the brightness far. What it's doing, it's trying to figure out what's far in, dis in the distance, and it's darkening it down. And then if I move this one, it's saying, I'm going to brighten the stuff that's in the front. So, you know, I went a little too far. Just going to do a tiny bit there. Maybe brighten everything up there. So see, you can see there's the uh, before, there's the after. Kind of works on different images differently. Same thing with the depth is how much do I want to apply it to it. And what I'll find that the depth, if I go to the left, it seems to darken the bottom of the image. So um, it, it works out really well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply that. It's going to now apply all of these things to it and bring it back into Photoshop. Why it's going into Photoshop, I'm just going to remind you that right now uh, there's a Black Friday special that's going on. If you go and follow the link in the description below, it's going to take you to where you can get up to 80% off on this product right now. It is the time of year, always Black Friday for the Luminar products. And if you're not using Neo, now is the time. They even have a special going on right now for a lifetime license. So check that out. We have it inside of Photoshop now. Let's go and we'll zoom out and we'll say um, in our history right here, here's our before and now here's our after so you know once you get this going it just takes a minute or two and you've kind of taken a flat image and gave it a little bit of life so that's some of the things that i like to do with images inside of luminar neo i'm going to show you one more feature that a lot of people like uh, another picture of naomi here um this sky is kind of a boring sky it's an evening sky nothing's going on a lot of people love using Luminar Neo as their sky replacement tool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to select Luminar Neo and it's going to open it up again into the uh, application. And this time we're going to see what we can do with that boring, boring sky. So once again, I'm going to hit the edit menu. So it gives me my editing tools. I am going to say sky, which now they're going to say for this photo, here's some suggestions. They're, they're giving me suggestions of a, a starry sky, but I think I'm going to stick with a blue sky. Let's try something like just these blue clouds. I'm going to give it a second. Now it's applying the sky, it says down here at the bottom, using the AI to figure out where the sky is. And you'll see, even around these trees, it's one of the reasons I want to pick this image to see how it does. See how it blends it through those trees? It looks fantastic. Um, but it said to do a starry sky. I want to try this starry sky. Let's see what it looks like. Check that out. So once I've selected something, maybe this is not, you know, to taste for you, but I'm going to, I'm going to use this one because I want to show you there are some things like the sky orientation. So, you know, we can move that up and down in the image. So, you know, maybe we find a, a better spot for it to fit. We can slide that thing different directions, zooming it in and out. I kind of like it about right there. And let's, uh, we can flip it. So we can flip it upside down or, or right to left. But the sky adjustment is what I want to show you. So here I can actually cool the sky down or I can warm the sky up. It's, you're not seeing it on this one so much. So let's go ahead and let's go back and choose 
that blue sky again. So we're going to select that sky and I'm going to show you if we make it a little bit blue or, you know, maybe it's summertime. So I want to warm it up a tiny bit. Maybe the sky is too dark. I want to brighten. I can brighten it or I can darken it down. So there's a lot of adjustments that I can make here. The atmospheric haze sometimes helps to sell it. But here's one of the important things that I want you to understand that I see people do all the time when they add skies in is they don't pay attention to what their backgrounds look like. So if this was shot with a very shallow depth of field, guess what's going to happen to your background? It's going to go out of focus. So I might want to defocus those clouds a little bit so it looks like it's supposed to, so it would match the background. There's no reason that my clouds would need to be razor sharp when everything else in my background is not razor sharp. And then there's mask refinement. So there's all kinds of things that I can do. If I like that, I can go ahead and apply it and we can be done. But I want to show you one more tool and then we are going to quit and it's going to be your turn to go find this product and you can go play with it. I love the fact that we can put structure into an image. So a lot of times we like our images to have maybe maybe that HDR look for, for some of you. You love that look. Well, this allows me to kind of get that HDR look on my image. I can boost it and, and have it do it a little bit more. But here's what I want you to notice. Here's what's really cool about Luminar is that when I turn that structure on and off, you'll notice it's not putting that structure on Naomi. The AI says, hey, that's a person. We don't want that to look crunchy and, and have lots of contrast. So it only applies it to the background. So if that's a look that you like, look at how quickly you can do that. So again, I'm going to go ahead and apply that. It's going to bring that up into Photoshop. And hopefully this just gives you a taste. There is hundreds of combinations and tools that you can use inside of Luminar Neo that is really fun to play with but also can streamline your workflow. So it's a highly recommended product. This is one that I use daily in my editing routine when I'm working on images. And again, right now there is a uh, Black Friday sale going on. So check the link down below. And I hope you enjoy playing around with this product as much as I do. And it becomes part of your everyday workflow. So this is Mark, the other chopstick guy. And I just want to remind you of one of the most important things in photography, and that is don't be lazy.